In our last video, we looked at how to go about measuring matter. Um, and one of the ways that we sorted out how to do that was um, by determining masses of the elements uh, in a substance. And so what we're going to do today uh, is we're going to look at how you go about and figure out the molar mass of a compound. Uh, you'll remember that the number on the periodic table that uh, references mass um, is referred to as the relative atomic mass. Um, essentially, it's how much something weighs compared to a proton, uh, which carries uh, the mass of, um, of one. And so vanadium is about 51 times bigger than a proton. Uh, we have a unit called the AMU, which represents uh, one atom of a thing. So one atom of vanadium is 50.94 AMUs, and we refer to that as the atomic mass. If we change that unit to grams, uh, then we have what's called the molar mass. Um, because all of these things are uh, based on relative masses, if we just scale up how much of a thing we have and change the units to grams, um, then we can measure an entire mole of something. Um, and a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So there is a massive difference <clears throat> between using AMUs on this number and using grams on this number. AMUs is one atom. Uh, grams is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, so those units really do matter. Uh, you may remember that an AMU is 1 12th the mass of a carbon-12 atom, which essentially allows us um, to set relative mass um, at the average mass between a proton and a neutron, which are the things that primarily carry um, uh, mass inside an atom. Electrons are pretty tiny. And then uh, a 1 AMU, if we were to convert that to grams, is 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. So um, 1 AMU is a pretty tiny amount of mass. And if you're talking about weighing atoms, you would need a pretty small unit. All right, well, what happens then if we want to find the mass of a compound? Well, it's a pretty straightforward process. If you want to find the mass of a compound, you need to know its chemical formula. In order to know its chemical, uh, once you have its chemical formula, then you can just add up all of the elements in the compound. So what if, for instance, we were to go about trying to find the formula mass of calcium hydroxide? Um, we call it a formula mass because the representative particle is a formula unit. If it were a covalent compound, we'd be looking for the molecular mass. If it was an element, we'd be looking for the atomic mass. Um, and so we need to think about what the units on that would be. So the first thing you need is a chemical formula for calcium hydroxide. So this would be a great time for you to practice chemical formulas. Pause the video, see if you can write down a formula for calcium hydroxide before we move on. So um, you need to write down the charges of each of these things. So calcium is a Ca2 plus. Hydroxide is one minus. Crisscross your numbers there, and you're going to need two hydroxides for every calcium. Don't forget your parentheses. And so then to find the mass of this compound, we're going to go to the periodic table. We're going to find the mass of a calcium. We're going to find the mass of two oxygens, because we have to distribute that two into the parentheses, and two hydrogens. So it's going to look like this. Notice every single one of my numbers is to two decimal places. Um, that is not standard. Um, it is something we're going to do in this class so that we always get the same number uh, when we're doing our calculations. You always need to pull um, your numbers from the periodic table with two decimal places. Um, and you'll notice oxygen 15.999, I round that to 16.00. So make sure you look at the third decimal place and decide whether or not you need to round up or round down. So if you add all those numbers together, you get 74.10, which is the relative formula mass. Um, again, it's the relative formula mass because the representative particle of an ionic compound is a formula unit. Formula mass then would be the mass in AMUs. That's the mass of one particle of calcium hydroxide. So one calcium, two oxygens, two hydrogens. And 74.10 grams or grams per mole um, would be the mass of one mole of calcium hydroxide. So that would be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units of CaOH2. All right, so we're going to go through and um, we are going to practice a handful of these. I'm going to kind of put them up one at a time. So um, when each uh, substance comes up, you should grab your periodic table, have it next to you, pause the video, see if you can come up with a molar mass, um, and then check your answer against, uh, against what we get here. We're going to start pretty simple. We're going to start with lithium. 
we're trying to find the molar mass. So we just go to the periodic table, make sure you pull it to two decimal places. And you should have gotten 6.94 grams per mole or uh, just grams is fine um, because the, the page here is labeled molar mass and uh, that mole would be implied there. Carbon tetrachloride. Okay, so the first thing again you're going to need to do is write a chemical formula, then add up all the atoms. You should pause the video, um, see if you can come up with an answer, and then check it here when we uh, post the answer. Okay, hopefully you got CCl4. Four chlorines, one carbon, gets you to 153.81 grams per mole. Okay, let's look at chlorine. Go ahead and write a formula and then get yourself a molar mass. Now, if you're looking at your page and it says 35.45, then that is the mass of a single chlorine, but you have to remember that chlorine always comes as a diatomic. When it's by itself, there are always two. When we say chlorine, we mean Cl2. What do we mean when we say that? Okay, so hopefully you looked up a mass, and that one is going to be 35.45 because chloride is Cl1 minus. There's an extra electron there, but the electron is not going to affect your mass. Go ahead and give this one a try. Okay, sulfurous acid. Uh, remember, I, you can come with us, so that comes from the sulfite ion. Sulfite ion is SO3 2 minus. Because it's two minus, you'll need two hydrogens. So H2SO3. Um, so two hydrogens, one sulfur, three oxygens, and you should have gotten 82.08 grams per mole. Here's your next one. Go ahead and write a formula, find a molar mass. Okay, so iron three sulfate, that's a three plus on the iron. Sulfate is SO4, two minus. So you'll need two irons, Fe2, and then three sulfates. So SO4 in parentheses with a three on the outside. That's going to get you 12 total oxygens, um, three total sulfurs, two irons. So a lot going on there. Hopefully if you did that and added those up, you got 399.88 grams per mole. Take a look at one more here. Um, potassium carbonate. So get yourself a formula for potassium carbonate. Find the molar mass. Okay, potassium carbonate. Uh, potassium is one plus. Carbonate CO3, two minus. So it's going to be two potassiums, one carbonate, K2CO3. And you should have gotten 138.21 grams per mole. Um, so that's how you go about finding molar mass. And uh, notice that it's key that you're able to write these chemical formulas from the names that are given to you. And then you also need to be able to sort out um, the different relative or the different um, types of mass and what they mean. So atomic mass is the mass of an atom in AMUs. Molecular mass is the mass of a covalent compound. Formula mass uh, is the mass of, a, of an ionic uh, compound or a formula unit. And then molar mass is a generic term for all of those things. The unitless number is the relative mass, and we can just substitute all those terms in again. Relative atomic mass is a unitless number for an atom, relative molecular mass, unitless number for a covalent compound. So just understand that the terminology is going to mostly get you the same numbers, uh, but the units mean different things. And really it's the, the atomic mass versus the molar mass that you really need to be clear about because an atomic mass in AMUs is one particle, uh, one atom, and a molar mass is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Uh, how big is a mole? So let's talk about this as a unit, and we have kind of already done this, um, that a mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So when we say the molar mass, we're telling you in grams how much um, that many of the particular particle weighs. Um, so um, if it's an element, we look at that number off the periodic table, and that number in grams is what it would weigh if you weighed out 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd of those particles. But that's a really big number, and as we talked about in our first video, 
Um, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd is way outside the range of human intuition. And not only are we dealing with an, a, an absurdly big number, but we're talking about measuring super tiny things. So what I want to do is I want to throw you a bunch of ama amazing mole facts um, that maybe will help you understand just how absurdly big this number is, or at least begin to um, understand how hard it is to conceptualize this. I wouldn't walk, bother about taking any notes on this. This is just for your own information. So the first thing is this. One mole of paper would make a stack that would reach to the moon more than 80 billion times. So if you stack papers, one on top of the other, you could go to the moon and back a whole lot of times on that um, paper tower. One mole of grains of sand would be all of the grains of sand on Miami Beach, which is a miles long section of Florida. Miami Beach is a huge uh, area. And that's a lot of sand. One mole of blood cells beat more than total number of blood cells found in every human being on Earth. And yet, a one liter bottle of water contains 55 moles of water. So um, one mole of sand covers miles of coastland uh, in Miami. Uh, and one mole of water barely fills up the bottom of a water bottle. Um, I have to understand the dramatic difference in size between molecules and things that we can pick up and see. You can hold a grain of sand in your hand and see it. If you had a single molecule of water in your hand, um, you wouldn't know, right? It's well below your range of perception. There are, in fact, three types of moles that live underground in North America. They're the eastern mo mole, the hairy-tailed mole, and the star-nosed mole. Um, and that is a picture of a star-nosed mole, a face only a mother could love. Um, one mole of inches, if you had a ruler and you started measuring distance, and you measured 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd um, inches, it would be 1,616,434 light years. Or you could go back and forth across our entire galaxy eight times. Again, an inch is not very big, but a mole of inches is an absurdly large number. Uh, one mole of seconds is about 19 quadrillion years. If you started counting one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, by the time you got to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Mississippi, um, you would be 19 quadrillion years down the line. Um, that's more than 4 million times the age of the Earth. Um, it's almost a million times the age of the entire universe itself. Um, if you started from the moment of the Big Bang, you wouldn't be at 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd Mississippis right now. And last one, if you had a mole of pennies, you would create a gravity well, but that's a whole other story. You could repay the United States national debt 86 million times. Um, now, this is fairly old data. I took this up a few years ago, so you could probably only pay it back about five times now. Uh, so there you go. Amazing mole facts help you begin to understand how big this mole is, or how big this number is. Um, in the next video, what we're going to talk about is how you go about experimentally determining that number.